welcome to Dinners with Donna. I am Donna, Donna. Uh, for those of you who don't know, and I cook once every other week, usually it's a Sunday. Uh, today we're doing a special stream on a Saturday because my good friend Nicholas is having a fundraiser tomorrow uh, starting at noon from Magic Kingdom, all for uh, the Vascular Birthmarks Foundation. So instead of watching me tomorrow, make sure you tune in to see Nicholas. He's Magical News Live. Um, we are having some technical difficulties today, which is pretty much the norm around here. <laughs> right, Richie? Um, so we're not able to use our microphones today, unfortunately, but this is going to be a shorter stream because I'm just making one thing. So we should be good to go. Um, if you can't hear me, let me know, and I'll try to speak up. Um, but I'm sorry we don't have the microphone today. My Surface laptop uh, totally crashed. Uh, so we're winging it and doing the best we can with what we've got left after our computer's dead. So um, we're using phones and, and doing our best. So hang in there with us, guys. All right. So um, today we are going to be making pastizio, which is a Greek version of their, their lasagna, uh, which is really, really good. And um, I think um, we're going to get to that. Uh, what I did, though... I pre-made one because it takes a long time. The sauce needs to simmer for an hour. Um, so I pre-made one yesterday. So we're going to actually have one ready to sample, and we're going to assemble one for you so you can see how we go about the process. I've got the meat sauce simmering on the stove already. But before we jump into cooking, there's a few things I want to go over today. Uh, first of all, welcome in, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me on this special Saturday stream. I'm so glad you're all here. Um, I appreciate your time and all of you coming in. Uh, thank you so much to my channel members. You guys are amazing. Um, I didn't make emojis uh, or anything for this particular stream, but um, we have other ones in there for the members to use, so just feel free to have at it. And um, my, my wonderful mods who are in blue with the wrenches, uh, they keep the chat family-friendly safe. And answer all your questions you may have. Just tag them if you need them, and they will get the questions answered for you or get them to us so we can answer them for you. So thank you to my mom. I love you guys. You mean the world to me, and I can't do this without all of you. So thank you. Now, should we do a quick chat check? You want to? Let's do it. Car Keith. Hi, Carol. Extraordinary. Oh, Kaylee, welcome in. It's so good to see you. Thank you for being here. Magical new blonde. Nikki, I did it, Nikki. I finally got the stream to go right. <laughs> Yay. Noelle. Hi, Noel. Welcome in. Excuse me, I'll pour the rest. Hi, Brandy. James Gerhardt. Hello, James. Alyssa and Neil. Hi, Alyssa and Neil. Welcome in. Donna Barron. Hi, Donna. CH. CH, welcome in. So good to see you. It's Joey's world. Hi, Lisa, Keith, and Joey. Yvonne G. Hi, Yvonne. Kathy H. Hi, Kathy. Patricia Carlson. Hi, Patricia. Tasha Rogers. Tasha, welcome in. Bella Bean. Hello. Cheeky Man Fan. Hi, Cheeky Man Fan. Nancy O. Hi, Nancy. So good to see you. Teresa Scar Squara. Yeah. Hi, Teresa. <laughs> Annie Coop. Hi, Ann. Rena Walter. Hi, Rena. Welcome in. Stephanie Danielle. Hello, Stephanie. Yes. ALJ. ALJ. Well, welcome in. Always such a pleasure to have you here. SG88 Key. Oh, hi, Diane. Welcome in. It's so good to see you. Samantha Lowe. I know her. Hi, Sam. Fantastic Chronicles. Well, hello, Tony. Monterey Molly. Hi, Molly. Laurie Jean Carlson. Hi, Laurie. Uh, we Brig get everyone? Brig Brigitta Anthony. Oh, Brigitta. Is it Brigitta or Brigitta? I think it's Brigitta. But hello and welcome in. Alex Gray. Hi, Alex. And if we're butchering your name, Brigitta, I'm so sorry. <laughs> did I say Cherry Connolly? Well, hello. No, I don't think he did. Okay. We caught up? Okay, so guys, um, another reason I'm only doing one thing today is because I need to rest up because in two weeks we have our big 
Christmas cookie baking marathon, but I also found out yesterday, I went to, as you know, I've been having issues with my foot and they thought it was tendonitis and all this other stuff and I've been getting cortisone shots and whatnot. Um, but it turns out because uh, the pain just has been not easing up at all. Um, and they think I may have ruptured my tendon. So I'm going to call on Monday to get an MRI schedule and uh, we'll know more uh, in the near future. But I'm trying to stay off of my foot if I can. It's really, really hard. Richard will tell you he's yelling at me all the time to sit down and I don't touch him because I'm really bad <laughs> at listening to sitting down and being still. I'm used to moving around, so it's hard for me. But um, that was one of the reasons I'm not making a whole big thing this week because I'm trying to save up for uh, two weeks from now, which is our humongous Christmas cookie baking marathon that is sitting Give Kids the World. We have already raised, guys, $748. Now, that's a good debt, but my goal this year is to make two wishes come true. That's $12,000. So we have a long way to go. And I know other people are doing fundraisers and everything. And I support all my friends. And I think everyone's fundraisers are very worthy. But of course, I want to hit my goal. So I really want to, you know, get the word out. I'm a smaller channel and I just want, you know, to succeed and, and do good things for good kids in the world. So any help you guys can give. Um, just sharing out the stream, letting your friends and family know what we're doing. Uh, even a dollar goes so far um, and is appreciated. So thank you so much. I pinned the link to our uh, donation page uh, to the top of the uh, chat. So if you are so inclined, please do not feel that you have to. Um, but, you know, you can help in other ways by sharing it out, spreading the word. If you can't afford to give, I totally understand. But if you are so inclined to donate and be so kind to do that, the link is pinned to the top of the chat, and I would most appreciate it. And thank you. So in two weeks, we have a huge show coming up, and um, we have lots of special guests coming, and it's going to be epic. And it's going to start at a special time. It's the same normal day we would normally do. It's, it's November 28th, which is a Sunday after a, a Thanksgiving weekend, after Thanksgiving, and we will be starting at 2 p.m. So mark your calendar so you're not late and don't want to miss it. We're starting off, uh, we're going to kick off with Stephen Amos, who is one of the directors of Gift Kids the World. He's been so gracious and kind to offer his time to come and bake with me and talk about, you know, what the village is, what it does, um, and, and help us, you know, for the cause, it's, it's gonna be wonderful. And like I said, lots of my friends are coming. You don't wanna miss it, it's gonna be so much fun. So mark your calendars, November 28th, two o'clock, huge fundraiser. Um, also, don't forget on December 7th, my wonderful friend, uh, who's like family to me, Corey from Corey Meets World, is doing a wonderful fundraiser of his own for Give Kids the World. He's putting on a Christmas show, um, and he's already announced that Hee Haw Bob will be performing. Corey will be singing, which I cannot wait for. And he did announce also that Josh from Resort TV One is going to be playing saxophone. So that's going to be such a special, special show. Don't want to miss that either. So mark your calendars for that. It's going to be December 7th at 7 p.m. So be there. Be clear. Don't want to miss it. All right. So the other thing, I've got things going here. I've got the meat sauce simmering. I've got water boiling for the pasta. We're waiting for things to kind of come along. So until that happens, I've got stuff to fill our time. And I hope you don't mind visiting with me. I love visiting with you guys. Um, but I was very fortunate and blessed to be invited to uh, Give Kids the World for a media event uh, kicking off their second annual Night of a Million Lights uh, Christmas display. And here's my, my media pass, which I think is so cool. So I've got my media pass, and then you got to basically preview the event. Uh, they have dancing lights and a tram show, and that's all included with your admission. Um, they have games you can play. There's food booths and all that kind of thing. That's an extra charge. Um, but they also, for $85, have a dessert party that you can attend. And we got to sample the desserts for the dessert party, and let me tell you, they were fabulous. 
and I highly recommend it. And that $85 does include your $35 admission uh, fee. So it's not that terribly much. All of the money raised goes directly to Give Kids the World. So you're going to a good cause. Um, so don't worry about that. It's like a win-win. You guys get the Christmas lights and the food and all that fun stuff, and Give Kids the World gets the benefit of the donations. So it's, it's a perfect combination, I think. So I got my task, and then they gave us uh, this map, which is really handy, of the light and what you can do there, which is really fun. And then they gave us a, a list of like the uh, ceremonies. There's also some fun facts that they gave us about the village. Uh, the display, the Christmas light display, features 1.25 million feet of light including 3.2 million lights that were donated by Walt Disney World. The entry features a 12-foot tall star archway and 30-foot long tunnel of dancing lights. The dancing light show encompasses 21 fully programmed villas set to music with six three-minute holiday vignettes playing each hour. The show features testimonials I give kids the world with children, one of which I have the very extreme pleasure of knowing, the Jackley family, Kellen. You've seen him cook with me on Halloween. He will be here for my cookie baking stream, and I cannot wait to bake with him again. And his sister, Kaylin. And his little voice is on the uh, narration of the light display, which I think is so cool. Okay, so. <laughs> The installation took place from September 2012, I'm sorry, September 12th of 2021 through November 9th. So they just finished the light. 73 Wish Family Villas are decorated with thousands of lights and 13 star clusters showcase the artwork of Give Kids the World Wish Children, which I think is so cool. The display includes 200 decorated Christmas trees with 55 sponsors supporting the event. The wish tree is 35 feet tall and wrapped in 400 plus strands of lights with 55 star spheres. Lighting production was executed by RWS Entertainment Group with support from Give Kids the World volunteers. Volunteers are so important. And if anyone is in the area or is going to be in the area from now until January 3rd, they still do need volunteers for the event. And it's such a fun thing to do. I highly recommend doing that if you can. Um, over the 52-night event, volunteers will contribute more than 30,000 volunteer hours. And Jody Benson's voice, The Little Mermaid, is on the tram tour. Uh, we heard it when we were there uh, for the media event. It was so cool. And proceeds from the Night of a Million Lights will make dream vacations come true for critically ill children. And that's what it's all about because Kids need to be kids. They don't need to be worrying about treatments and medication and surgeries. They have enough on their plate. This is their time to have a week away where they can just enjoy life and be a kid. And that's what I love about Give Kids the World. Okay, so that said, we got a goodie bag when we got there. And it's a reusable tote, which I love, and I'm going to use this forever. I love it. And it came with this really cool zipper cup, and I believe it lights up. We should open it and see. I haven't opened anything. I'm so excited to show you guys. We do. $4.99 from Nancy. Oh. Nancy. <laughs> Thank you and Richie for today's show. I hope all works out with your foot. Thank you so much, Nancy. I really appreciate that. That means the world to me. And yeah, I'm sure I'll be fine. I don't worry about me so much because, you know, there's other things I want to worry about. <laughs> but this um, zipper cup is so cool. It's um, purple, which is the Give Kids the World uh, signature color, purple and white. And I didn't pull the, the little tab out, so let's see what this does. Oh, it lights up. I don't think you can see it. But can they see it? Maybe we can turn the light off. Now can they see it? I don't know. <laughs> but it, it does light up like a little light bulb. It's really cute. Could they see it? I don't know. But I, I, I will put this in my office for sure. This is going to be so cool. I'll give this stuff to you. And then they gave us these really cool 
glasses. I should have opened this. I didn't even think about it. They give these really cool glasses and yeah. They light up. Do they light up too? Oh yeah, they do. Do I need to pull a tab or something? Or am I broken? <laughs> Everything's breaking for me today. It's not my day, guys. <laughs> oh, Richie fixed it. They sell these in the gift shop. Yes, they also sell these in the gift shop. They also sell the sipper cup in the gift shop. And now that you, I want you to take me seriously. I'll, I'll try these off. <laughs> oh, they blink, they twinkle. They do all kinds of stuff. Look at that. They have all multi-function glasses. How fun is that? Okay. So we also got a straw for the sipper. That's always important. And of course, being in the times we're in, um, but I use this all the time anyway before, you know, the times were the way they are. So they gave us, uh, give kids the world hand sanitizer. Very handy dandy. Oh, you're so cute. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then they gave us, this, look at this little pin. Isn't that cute? And you know, I'm like the queen of pins. So this was like a big deal to me to get the pin. And then we got some give kids the world stickers, which I think are really nifty. I love them. Yep. So I'm going to keep all this stuff and always think of my wonderful time at the village visiting. Oh, and I forgot one last thing that they gave us in our goodie bag. We got these awesome Christmas light up lights. Look at that. Aren't they nice and festive? I might wear these on the cookie baking stream. I don't know. What do you guys think? Put a thumbs up if you think I should wear these on the cookie baking stream with Steven. That would be fun. So now, when you go to Give Kids the World um, to the Night of a Million Lights, of course they have a, a merch stand set up, actually several of them, where you can get t-shirts, hoodies, um, board games. They have a Candyland specially themed to uh, Give Kids the World. Um, I own that and it's so much fun. You guys gotta check it out if you can. And it's only like ten dollars. It's really reasonable. Um, and they have all kinds of things, note cards and stickers and but I got for my tree. This, oh awesome. Okay, so I will rock the lights for you guys in two weeks. So we got this um, ornament for the tree, it's ceramic, and it's designed and uh, drawn by a wish child. And every year they pick a different one. And this is 2021. Uh, this says, Hi, uh, Happy Holidays, Give Kids the World Village. And the art is by Catherine, who is age nine, and Diana, age 16. So there's the back. And I think it's adorable. And it's going to have a very honored place on my tree. So I bought that ornament, which is really cool. There. And then I got this for my office. But I just thought it was so nice. It's the Night of a Million Lights um, lunchbox. Isn't that cute? It has the logo, it has the village. So whimsical. And then inside it's just, it's just a silver lunchbox. But I thought it was so cute for my office and a great keepsake uh, to remember the night by. So I got that. That to Richie. And then these last two are my very favorite. Um, I got my whirly gig, <laughs> which I adore. I love punching the little snowman's nose to make it go. <laughs> Who doesn't like a whirly gig? And then um, this I got mostly for Richard. <laughs> it's a little wand he can walk around with. <laughs> and it also has the multi functions, which I think is cool. But um, yeah, so that was that was our evening at Kids Kids World. It was so much fun and so worth it. And I'm always honored when they ask me to be a part of any event there, uh, let alone a media event, which is even more special. Um, it truly means the world to me that they would even think of inviting me out there. And it's it's an honor, honestly, to to be included in such a thing. I'll give this to Richard, and now we are ready. I believe. Let's see. We did all the things. Oh, one last thing. I forgot. I'll throw this away. Okay, so I almost forgot. Um, I was fiddling around with my spreadshirt shop, and I came up with a brand-new Christmas 
shirts design. And I made a whole bunch of new merch for you guys in my Spreadshirt shop. If you're interested in it, it's really cute. It's the design logo I'm using for my um, cookie baking marathon. Uh, so it's really cute. I don't know if one of you guys can pull it up on the phone so I can show it to them. It's my Spreadshirt shop. If you go to the video description, it's in there. Just click on it, and then you can see the merch. That's your channel. <laughs> Funny, actually. Okay. Oh, look. Our water is just now starting to boil. Wonderful. I'm going to stir my sauce over here real quick. Okay. So now I'm going to, um, while Richie's getting all of that, you know, together for you guys, I'm going to read you the CCO recipe. Um, and I do say allow uh, this, to, you know, allow a lot of time to make it. Um, when I pre-made everything, it took me a good couple of hours or so to get the one I made for the demo. Uh, there should be another design. Anyhow, um, it took me about two, two and a half hours to prep the um, demo pasticcio for you guys, and I'll, I'll check it out later. I might be having more technical issues with my spreadsheet shop. Yay! <laughs> but we'll figure it out. Anyhow, um, I would allow extra time. It does freeze very well, so you can make this ahead of time and reheat it. Just like I did with the one that's in the oven right now that we're going to taste. Um, I made it, uh, what, two days ago? Because we were out yesterday. Yeah. So um, I, I took it out of the freezer and everything and put it in the oven, and now it's just reheating. So when we assemble ours, we'll be testing the one that I made prior. But here is all that is in your pasticcio, which is the Greek lasagna. Um, of course, you have your pasta layer, a meat layer, and then this one has, instead of shredded cheese, it has a bechamel sauce as the top. Um, so the meat sauce contains two tablespoons of olive oil, three cloves of garlic, finely minced, two onions. They said red. I always use sweet, and that works just fine for me. Uh, two pounds of lean ground beef, um, three quarters of a cup of red wine, uh, a 28-ounce can of crushed tomatoes, uh, two beef bouillon cubes. I try to get them without MSG because uh, Richard cannot have that. So um, be careful when you're getting your bouillon. Make sure it's the right kind. Um, two tablespoons of tomato paste, one teaspoon of white sugar, a bay leaf, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon powder, one cinnamon stick, one quarter teaspoon of ground cloves, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of black pepper. So that all went into the meat sauce, which is now simmering on the stove. And I'll go over there and show you in a minute what we did. But I'll go over that with you guys one more time. So you know when all went in to the meat sauce. So we had the meat, of course. We had the ground beef. We had two tablespoons of tomato paste. And I, I like when I'm just using like two tablespoons. I don't want to use the whole can. So I get this tube of tomato paste and it works out really, really well. And then we had our bay leaves. We had our, nope, that's in there. Uh, yes, the ground cloves. I'm sorry, that did go in there. The cloves, the cinnamon stick, the, uh, nope, that's for the bechamel sauce, uh, the ground cinnamon, the bouillon cubes, and of course the red wine. Now I don't drink, but I do know as a cook that you always want to pick, pick a decent wine. You don't want to go with one you wouldn't drink. So I kind of went with a mid-range uh, Apothic Crush, which is a soft red blend. So it's not like a, a Chardonnay or a Merlot. It's kind of a blend of those grapes. Um, so I thought it would be a, a good full-bodied wine and kind of mellow for the sauce. So that's why I chose that. Okay. And no, I didn't drink this whole bottle of wine. I just used the two cups for the for the sauce. Drank half of it. I did not. That's probably why I'm having so many issues. Carol Hanks wants to know where you bought the two tomato things. Oh, hi mom. That's my mom, guys. Carol Hanks. 
Um, so mom, I got it online uh, at the, like the um, Instacart, because I get my groceries delivered still, um, if I can, and I, they have them at the store. So you can just find them at any grocery store where the tomato paste is, and yeah, you can just grab them, they're like two bucks or something for this big tube, and they last a long time, so I highly recommend it. Okay, so moving right along, I'm gonna go to the prep can so I can show you, I mean the stove can, I'm sorry. And there we go. So this is the meat sauce that I have here that was going with all that stuff in there, and it looks and smells amazing. Now, once this is a uh, simmer, for an hour, you have to bring it to room temperature before you put it in the lasagna, so or the pasticcio. So I turn it off to cool down to room temperature now because it is thick, and it's not going to be saucy like a spaghetti sauce or a bolognese. It's really thick, and that's what you want. Um, and of course, before you um, assemble your pasticcio, you need to take that bay leaf and the cinnamon stick out because you don't want someone getting that as an unpleasant surprise. You want them enjoying their dinner and not going to the ER because you fed them a baby or a whole cinnamon stick. That would not be fun. Okay. So now our water is warm. So I'm going to show you what we use. Now this is another trick because um, I ordered this on Amazon. It's a special uh, pasticcio pasta. It's a little bikini basically, which is an Italian pasta. However, you have to make sure you get the right number because that's how wide the hole is in it. And I'll show you. It's almost like a little straw. And I don't know if you can see it. But there is a hole in it and at the end. And so it's like a round, long tooth. And you can use ZD if you want to or 10A. I've seen recipes like with that. But I like wanted to be authentic for you guys. This is actual grease of you know, Greek pasticcio from Greece, and it, you want number two. Um, a lot of bucatini I found was number 14, and that's really thin and skinny, and it's it's not going to work for this. So you want to make sure you get number two uh, bucatini. If you're getting bucatini, or you can get this Misco, Misco uh, number two pasta on Amazon, and I think it came in a two pack. So. And we're only going to use half because that was one thing I found when I made this the mock one for the um, demo is that the pasta, when I used all the pasta like the recipe said to, uh, my bechamel was spilling all over uh, the edge of the pan. It, and it said to use a 13 by 9 by 2, a standard casserole dish, like I always do for my lasagna. And the pasta was just way too much and i don't know if it's because this particular pasta has more than normal in it or what but i'm only going to use half this time um because it was way too much and i didn't have room for the uh, sauce on top it was just overflowing mm -hmm. so we're going to put the pasta in, and i call uh salted the water of course uh you always salt your pasta water we're going to put the half of a package in here gently don't burn yourself Jane, B said she loves your copper square copper pot. Where do you get them? Ah, okay. You can actually get them almost anywhere, uh, Jane. I got mine on uh, QVC and Doolily. They also sell them on Amazon. They're just called um, Copper Chef, I believe. And um, yeah, they're really easy to come by. I got this one uh, with the spout that I put the pasta in on um, Amazon because. Um, I wanted the spout so when I'm pouring out, like if I'm draining beef or if I'm draining like the pasta, I have a spout to pour from. So that's why I did that. I'm gonna, oh, look good, the timer's on for 11 minutes. That's about how long our pasta needs to go. So now what I'm gonna do, because we're bringing our, um, our meat mixture has, has, is all ready to go. I'm gonna take this off the heat and I'm gonna put it over here. Is this okay, Richard, over here? Okay, what I'm going to do now is start on our uh, bechamel sauce. And if you recall, guys, we made a bechamel before. It's basically butter and uh, flour, which you start out as a roux. You add cream and cheeses to it. 
And we're going to add a little bit of nutmeg as well. Um, my nutmeg, I think I put here. More sunshine, please. Season's greetings. Oh, season's greetings, Jim. So good to see you. Welcome, Anne. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate that so much. Okay, so now for the bechamel sauce, we need seven tables, uh, tablespoons of butter, which is roughly two for this, minus two tablespoons. A cup of flour, oh, I'm sorry, three quarters of a cup of flour, four cups of milk, uh, an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg, and half a teaspoon of salt, and Kefalotiri Greek cheese, but because, you know, public here does not have that, uh, the Greek cheese, we are using what they recommend, which is uh, shredded Parmigiano, uh, Parmigiano Reggiano. And I just set it in a block, and I used my food processor to shred it, and it did it beautifully. Um, I'll show you how it came out after, and we're going to add the cheese in. Okay, we'll add the butter in. Now I'm just gonna throw my butter in the way of the wrappers. And I will say, um, have your oven preheated to 350 degrees to bake your pastizia. And I already prepared a um, 13 by 9 by 2 inch casserole dish, uh, but just by spraying it in the pan like I always do. I had a I'm going to need a whisk. I'm going to whisk. And we're going to need a measure for our. Okay, so I'm going to get all the tools that we're going to need. We're going to need a spoon. We're going to need our measuring cup. I need a measuring spoon for our nutmeg and our salt. Okay, we're good. Cricket Fox says hi. Hello, Cricket. Welcome in. And UK Disney Keith and Mandy. Oh, hi, Keith and Mandy. It's so nice to see you. Welcome in. Amy from AJC Magic. Amy, it was so wonderful to see you in person last week. That just was so awesome. Jersey Mike. Mike, welcome in. Yay, all my friends are here. That always makes my day. Okay, so with the Bechamel sauce, any Bechamel sauce, you're going to melt your butter, then you're going to stir in your flour. And then we're going to stir in, let's see, we're going to slowly pour in our milk after the um, flour and butter cook for, together for about a minute. So I'm going to pre-measure my um, flour. So it's ready to go. Okay. And I'm also going to pre-measure my nutmeg and my salt. So I can just dump it in there when I'm ready. So we need an eighth of a teaspoon of our ground nutmeg. So I'll ground that real fast. And then we need a half a teaspoon of salt. She's ghostly said, did you say milk and cream? Uh, no, just milk. And highly recommend using whole milk, and I did specially buy whole milk for this because uh, it makes a nice, uh, nice, nicer, richer sauce, which is what you want with this. Um, this is a virgin kind of recipe. You're putting all this effort into it. You might as well go out, and you already have seven tablespoons of butter going here, so I mean, why stop there? <laughs> this is definitely not something I would eat every day. Um, it's, a, it's a special treat. It's been years since I've actually made pastizia, just because, you know, there's whole milk in it, and butter, and pasta, and it's, it's just a lot of stuff. But um, it's a nice treat. Rich is afraid he won't like it, just I'm, I'm telling you guys right now, because there is the cinnamon factor in the beef, and he can't get past that. Now, I grew up in a Middle Eastern uh, home, where we ate that kind of thing all the time, all spice, salt, pepper, I mean salt and pepper. I mean, 
allspice and cinnamon and all that kind of stuff was always, you know, always around. Of course, salt and pepper. You put salt and pepper on everything. I don't know what's wrong with me today. I think all the technical issues uh, affect me. Okay, so I hope you can see we're making a roux here, just like a paste. We're just going to cook this a little bit in about a minute. But yeah, we use a lot of mint, um, just spices like that. And I, I, I just, I think it's delicious, personally. And it's very similar to um, African cuisine. I guess that's why I like Sanaa so much, because they use the same kind of flavor profile in their food. Uh, Richie doesn't like that either. <laughs> Do you, Rachel? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. We had a um, dinner party for my uh, birthday a couple of years ago in 2019, and we all went to the Harambe night, um, like, dining thing they had, and Richie did not like a lot of the food that was there. I thought it was delicious. But Richie's not as, as an adventurous Peter as I am either. Okay, so see, it's almost like a dough, which is fine, because now we're going to mix in the milk really slow. And then, let's see, I'm just reading the directions back. It says, while stirring, slowly pour in half the milk. It sure should turn into a wet cake. Then do the other half and keep stirring until it's lump free. And if not, you just get your whisk out, which is why I have my whisk at the ready. So we're going to pour half of the milk in. And I already used this uh, half gallon, has eight cups in it. So I just used half of it uh, for the one I have in the oven, and I'm going to use the other half here. We're going to slowly pour, slowly pour. Stirring and stirring and stirring. Pamela Hoffman wants to know what your favorite cookie is. Hi, Pamela. Um, hmm, that's a tough one. I like lots of different cookies. I like anything with like lots of chocolate chips or M and M's in it, or um, I make s'mores cookie bars. Those are like my favorite. And I also love the peanut butter and jelly cookie bars that I made on the stream once. Oh my gosh, those are so incredible. Those are so hard to beat. Can't beat a good peanut butter and jelly bar. Can you, Richie? Nope. Suzanne says, hi, Don. I'm listening while I'm driving home. Suzanne, we miss you guys. It was so wonderful to spend some time with all of you. And hi to Ethan and McKayla and Carlos. Okay, so this is a wet cake now. Now we're going to add the rest of the milk in. Here we go. She's ghostly said, I feel bad that I'm cooking such a complex dish and I'm fixing frozen pizza for my family. Ah, that's funny. No harm in that. Okay, so we're going to add our cinnamon and what what would you suggest for a side dish with this time? Okay, so Three yeah, times. I would definitely recommend um, some kind of something light because this is a rather heavy dish. I would go with like a Greek salad, or um, in my family, we used to have a salad called Fatouche. Um, that is basically a salad and it, it starts kind of like with a vinaigrette that you make. And instead of like croutons, we serve it with um, uh, like chunks of pita bread. Uh, that are toasted, so those kind of act as the crouton. I should make that for you guys sometimes. That's a really good salad. Okay, Richie. I'm going to need your help in a minute. Actually, in one second. Okay. I'm going to turn that off, and then we need to get it out of the oven. So I'm going to keep stirring. Move my milk to it's not near a hot burner. And I need to get this out of the oven, Richard. Which I 
is three ounces of the cheese. So that's going to be half of this. So don't, don't remember, don't, if you shred it all at once, your six ounces of Parmigiano Reggiano or the Capillatory uh, cheese. Uh, make sure you don't put all of this in your base now. It would be yummy, but then you won't have your, your cheese to top it. So make sure you reserve half. Jennifer Piccolo has to leave. Oh, Jennifer, I didn't even see you in the chat. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. It's Hi, Jennifer. We're going to miss you. But thank you so much for making the time to be here. We always appreciate you and Tony so much. You didn't tell me Jen was in here. Oh, <laughs> Did we miss anyone else? It was a secret. Oh. Sorry, Jen. The Little Mermaid fan said, Hi, Little Mermaid fan. Can't wait to see the finished product. I also wanted to tell you about the cookie I made last weekend. Ooh. You have to try it with a simple Snicker Beetle recipe, and then you make cinnamon chips in it. Oh, my goodness. That sounds heavenly. I, I definitely need to try that. Zach's here. Zach, welcome in. And everyone, if we missed your uh, comment, now, because I can't see your comments at all, so everyone in the chat to tell me who's in the chat and everything. If, if we didn't see you, just tag our John in the chat, and he will um, definitely let you me know that you're there. And I'm not, not ignoring you guys. Just want you to know that. We try to get to all the comments. It's so hard. Jennifer said, no love, no worries, love you. Oh, love you more. I can't wait to see you guys again. Okay, guys, so look at this. See how this is beautiful like this? And it coats the spoon. The back of the spoon, that's exactly what you're looking for. And it's been five minutes. So we're taking this off at the heat. We're turning our timer off. And now, I'm going to stir in first the spices. And I'm going to put this back on my flour so I don't make a mess because I'm going to accidentally like that. Um, so we've got our eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg ground and half a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to stir that in gently. Victoria Ward said, I'm a new subscriber. This is my first cooking astonishment. Oh, Victoria, that's so wonderful. Welcome in. I hope you have fun with us. We have a lot of fun cooking. Marilyn, Maybe. Marilyn Barker with was Hi, Marilyn. Yes, we make a lot of yummy food, and you joined it the perfect time, too, because um, our next stream, which is going to be on November 28th, uh, which is the Sunday of Thanksgiving weekend, um, at 2 o'clock, we're having a huge cookie, Christmas cookie baking marathon benefiting gifts gift for the world. So it's going to be so much fun, and I, I intend to go until we make two children's wishes come true, so that could take quite a while, but I have lots of recipes under my belt to and lots of friends to help me uh, get through all that. Judy Hopefully Hagel. my foot holds up. Judy Hagel says hi. Hello, welcome in. It's so good to see you. Jan F. Disney. Hey Jan, welcome in. So as you can see the, the cheese pretty much like instantly melts into there. It's beautiful. It's beautiful stuff. We're just gonna keep stirring until everything is incorporated. And the cheese is all melted. Vicky Gillespie wants to know what you're making. Hi, Vicky. We are making pastizio, which is basically a Greek uh, style lasagna. And we're working on the bechamel right now. Okay. So now this needs to cool at least for five minutes before we put it onto our pastizio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to stir because there's a little bit of um, cheese not melting. So I'm going to keep, it'll melt, but just keep stirring. That's the thing with the base now. You just going to attend to it and give it attention and love, and it will love you right back. If you don't pay attention to it and you don't love it, it will not love you enough to clumpy and yucky. So just make sure you give it the love and attention it needs to form, and you'll be just fine. Blue Note says, hello, wonderful Donna. Oh, Chris. It's so good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. I missed you. I hope you're well, my friend. Did I tell you Jay Nashville? No, hi, Jay. So good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. Okay. So, I'm going to bring this gingerly. Where did you put the hot pepper? 
I'm going to get my hot pads just to be on the safe side. I'm going to move the uh, basin on to a cooler area to cool, basically. Victoria wants to know what pastizio means. Uh, pastizio basically means Greek pasta bake. Um, and that's exactly what it is. It has a layer of pasta, which is like a bucatini, but it has to be number two. You have to make sure it's sticky enough. Um, basically, a bucatini is a long noodle, a uh, round noodle with a hole in it. It's a tube, basically, a tube pasta. And you'll see, because we're going to get the pasta uh, going next, actually. Um, and we have a, a um, what do you call it, a um, beef layer that we uh, simmered on the stove. It simmers for an hour. So that's why we, we made one ahead of time for you guys. This looks absolutely beautiful. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna let the bechamel cool. And while the bechamel is cooling, our pasta has cooled and has drained. And we're gonna go back to the stove for a moment. Um, so we're gonna go over here. Here we go. And we're back over here. Do not put it on a burner. We're just looking to uh, get the pasta over here. And then you can see the pasta is like a little tube um, with holes in it. So that's what we're looking for. And it's a number two uh, pasticcio pasta or bucatini. And now what we're going to do is gently stir in I'm just going to risk my egg white a little bit more because they've been sitting there just a little bit. We're going to whisk these up a little bit. Pasta's been cooling. Now remember, like I said, like with the bechamel and why it's cooling is because if we put our eggs into the hot dish, it's going to make a mess. And we don't want scrambled egg whites in our pasta. We want it to be creamy. And the reason we are putting this in here is so that the feta cheese that we're going to put in will adhere to the pasta and not just fall off. So we're going to gently stir this in. Like so. Okay, basically the egg whites are kind of acting like a glue so that the uh, crumbled feta and we're using our four ounces of crumbled feta. And you, you want to be kind of gentle with it. And just stir it all in there. Like so. Isn't that beautiful? And this just gives it more flavor and creaminess and, and it, it um it coats the pasta almost like a sauce. We don't want to use the red sauce on the pasta because we've got the beef layer going on top of it. So it just kind of makes it really decadent and rich and creamy. And you can see that that is kind of melting in. Which is really awesome. Okay. It's Noah here. Noah, welcome in. So glad you're here. Always good to see you, Noah. Okay, so now I'm going to let that sit for a minute. I'm going to throw this away. And now we need to, let's see, we need to put the timer on for about five minutes. And then we can incorporate the egg yolk into the basin out. So that's the last step of the basin out. And then we can assemble. Now, I think. What I'm going to do because the bechamel goes on last, so I'm going to move the bechamel aside, and while the five minutes is uh, timing on the timer, uh, we will start assembling our pasticcio. Now I am going to put food gloves on for this because um, we want the pasta to try as best you can to go in the same direction, and it's difficult to do that. Um, you'll see what I mean. So I've got my prepared. 13 by 9 inch casserole dish. And I'm going to get my gloves so I can handle the pasta. And I hope you all can hear me. Um, we don't have mics today. We had some technical 
technical difficulties from the start, but we're going with it because this is my last stream uh, before my big fundraiser. So I really wanted to make sure that we get the word out. I want everyone to be there that can to support us and support Give Kids the World. Such a wonderful, wonderful organization doing beautiful things for children and their families. And I just really wanted to get that out there. Leanne Blackman says, hi, Donna. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, how do you know now? You're gone. Never late. Okay. So, I'm going to just dump the pasta in here like that, right? Michelle loves your tree. Oh, thank you, Michelle. Okay, so I'm going to get all that good egg white and, and feta cheese and all that out of there. And see, both empty. And now I'm going to try to spread it out evenly. And what I can't, um, you know, get to go the right way, I'm going to do it with my hand and try to get it so the pasta is laid. It's, it's almost impossible to do it that way. Oh, hi, Tommy and Stacy and Kaylin and Kellen. <laughs> You guys are awesome. I cannot wait to bake cookies with you guys in a couple weeks. It's going to be a big show. It's going to be so much fun. I cannot wait. Leanne yeah, says she's making it too. Just about to go in the oven. Perfect. So now we're just going to try to get the pasta going this way, lengthwise. It's easier said than done. But if you're patient and you just kind of, you know, do the best you can. It's not rocket science. If it doesn't all go the same way, it's not enough. It's going to make a big deal. Jay Grubb. Yeah. Hi, Jeff. Welcome in. That'd be good for Halloween. More. Sure. <laughs> It'd be like one of those games, you know, where you, like, put the blindfolds on the kid and have them squeeze them. Remember, like, they did, like, the peel grapes when they said they were brains. Did they ever yeah. do that to you? Yeah. Ah, uh, childhood. So we can't wait either. So excited. I can't wait. And I saw you guys were at SeaWorld. How exciting. I can't wait to get out there for the holidays either. It looks like so much fun. We were there in 2019, and um, we got that, the cocoa, uh, like, refillable mug thing. And now look, guys. Look how much. This is half the pasta. And it's, like, it's filling the dish. So I'm just going to compress it down as much as I can. Oh, you know what I need you to do, Richie? That I forgot to do. Can you grab a um, baking sheet out of the uh, bottom of the stove? And I need to line it with foil because I have a few in the station on the dish again. Yeah. No, it's not going to Remember I moved them? <laughs> okay. Uh, so here's what we look at, we're looking at now. And this is half of that bag of pasta, guys. So it still looks like a lot of pasta. Should I take some of this out? I think so, too. That's a lot of pasta. I'm going to take some of it out and put it in the and that was well. right. Okay, so this is perfect timing actually because now, let's see, I'll try to fix these. And let them go as straight as we can, and if they don't, it's not the end of the world. And kind of compact them down. You can use your tongs, you can use your gloved hands, but I took my gloves off. So there's that. But now our five minutes is now up. So now it is time to add the two egg yolks to our bechamel. So what I'm going to do is switch out. Is that in the way? Okay. And we're going to pop over with our bechamel. And we are going to gently stir in the two egg yolks. This just makes it nice and rich. The yolks on you. The yolks on me. I'm just going to stir it till it's all well incorporated. And you don't see any more yellow. 
the hazel bed looks great. Gee, hi to you and Kara. Oh my gosh, I miss you guys so much. Janie B wants to know, does pastizio, whatever that is, pastizio. taste better the next day, sort of like spaghetti? Yes, I, I really think it does, just like lasagna does. I always think it gets better over time. Um, so absolutely. And that's why I was excited to make one ahead too, because I know it's going to taste better than if I just made this one, put it in the oven, we waited for the hour, like what would we do for that hour? And then, and then tried it. It would have been, yeah, cut out of the oven is not the same. It needs to set and settle. Okay, so the bechamel is done. So now, what we need to do. You guys are amazing! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I love you guys so much. We are so going to do this. We are going to get our $12,000. We are going to make two critically ill children's wishes come true. And we are just going to do this. We're going to get together as a community and make this happen. And I can't do it without your help. So I cannot thank you enough for, for doing that. My gosh. During this training, Madeline and Emily both Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, both of you. I cannot tell you. Words cannot even start to describe how, how deeply I appreciate that. Zach said, hey, Donna, are you streaming today because of the next stream tomorrow? I am, yes. Nicholas is having his uh, fundraising stream for Vascular Birthmarks Foundation tomorrow. At noon, we will be joining him. I don't know how much walking I will be doing because I'm not supposed to be doing too much walking, but I'm going to stay as long as I possibly can and help Nicholas out because it's a tradition. We always go to help Nicholas and he always helps me. So, you know, we're like family. And um, yeah, if he, Vascular Birthmarks Foundation really helped out Nicholas when he was a young child. Um, he had lots of surgeries um, and, and had, you know, some medical issues. And he'll discuss that tomorrow on his stream. But um, that's why he chooses to, um, you know, uh, Vascular Birthmarks Foundation as his fundraising uh, charity of choice. And it's, a, it's an annual thing. And I'm so excited to be a part of that, too, tomorrow. JL here. Oh, hi, JL. Welcome in, my friend. Hope you're doing well. Exactly. So you rock, Ellis. You uh, thanks Yes. For, thank you, for Emily. Thank you for donating and helping make dreams come true for kids like Kelly. Yes. Yeah. And you know what? We should. Tommy should be a mod. Do you guys know how to do that? Kiddo mode. Hmm? Kiddo mode. Must be. That Florida feeling here. How that Florida feeling? Sam's gonna hook you up with a wrench, Tom. That way you can post links to the fundraisers and all that kind of stuff, too. That would help me out immensely. We're working on it. Okay, we will definitely do it before the next stream. I think we can't do it because all my yeah. phones are being used for devices today, and I don't have my computer. So oh, lucky me. Um, <laughs> yes. JC Valeche, that's so sweet of you to be to be there for Nick and to have your stream today. Oh, well, thank you. Yes, I wouldn't have it any other way. Nicholas is family to us, and, you know, um, he totally forgot <laughs> that it might be a stream day for me. And then when he said, are you coming to my fundraiser? I said, well, what day is it? He's like, November 14th. And I looked at my camera and I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> and I said, well, I better figure this out. I was just glad it didn't happen on the cookie baking stream because I was like, that would have been a disaster. So luckily, we are both able to do our fundraisers and do some good, which is a good thing. So, okay, so now we just top the pasta with our beef layer. Sorry, just realized we're walking in under the kitchen. Oh, is that what happened? <laughs> you got a two dollar super chat from Disney up there. They're out. Oh, Brandy, thank you. I need prayers for your foot to get better. Thank you, yes. I just want to be able to walk in the parks again like I used to and just walk around my house like I used to and not even think about it. The things we take for granted, honestly, um, I will never take that for granted again because 
my goodness, I, I, my foot's been bad now. First it was the plantar fasciitis, and now it's the uh, <laughs> ridiculous uh, tendonitis or maybe a ruptured tendon. They don't know what it is, so. Christine, welcome in. Yes, too, look, I took all that pasta out of that, and look, this is just going to fit. You should have seen it, guys. When I used the whole thing of pasta, this was like a sea of bechamel all over. Did we get the cookie sheet and, and put a foil on it? We did. Okay. That's the 88 keys. That's what I got. Hey, Diane. So good to see you. Okay. Janie beat the beat prayer heart stuff. Aww, you're so sweet. Thank you. Okay, so now this, there's this little patch of beads that needs to be covered from this. Just kind of get my bechamel over there. You want everything covered that you can. You don't want to see any red from the meat or anything like that. Okay, now we just top this with the rest of our cheese. And we're going to put it on the baking sheet and, and um, bake it for about an hour. It says 30 to 40 minutes. Mine took an hour, a good hour to bake. And then when you take it out, if you're serving it right away, like the same day, make sure you let it sit at least 10 to 20 minutes so that everything settles. Because otherwise, if you cut into it, it's going to just collapse and be a big mess. Tracy, yeah. Go ahead. Tracy, so good to see you. It was so great seeing you guys also last week. We saw so many of our friends. We just love seeing all of you. It's so hard for me to get to a park anymore with my feet the way they are. And I feel so bad that I have to say no to a lot, and I don't mean to. It's just my feet are not cooperating at all. That's why I've been doing lots of dinners or meetups at Disney Springs where I can sit down. So that's why that's been like that, guys. Okay. So, all we need to do now, Richard, is put this on the baking sheet. Oh, oh Richard's going in. Look at that. And then, we put it in the oven. I'll do it. Yes. You think you can do it without spelling? Yes. Okay. Look at you. Okay, so I'll put that in the oven for about an hour. And this is why I made one. Ahead of time. And we're going to cut into it, Richard, and, and try it. Richard's not excited. So, here it is, guys. This is a finished pasticcio. Yeah, that one, I used all the pasta. That was not good. It overflowed. I had to change the foil when it came out. It was a little bit of a mess. That's why I'm, another reason I'm glad I made it ahead of time because that would not have been pretty to show you guys. But it, it did give me, you know, tips to give you guys. So I'm going to look at my pasta one more time because I'm going to tell you how many ounces were in here so you know not to use as much. Because look, I've got a half a bag left. It's, uh, uh, it was a pound. It was a pound of number two. Greek pasticcio bucatini pasta. You can use Italian bucatini, but make sure it's number two and that the holes are big like that and big enough and they look like this. Like little straws, skinny straws. Um, but that's what you're looking for. But you can also substitute penne or rigatoni. Um, I've done that in the past. It doesn't really work the same. If you can find this and invest in this, it's worth it, I think. Um, but we're going to cut into it. But I would definitely use maybe a third of the package because even when I used half, look at how much I had to take out so that my uh, bechamel and beef would fit in there. So take that into account. I would use a third of the package and save the rest. But um, you ready to cut into this? Triple A Sparkle says, looks amazing and perfect brown. Well, thank you, Triple A Sparkle, and welcome in. So good to see you. All right. I'm going to cut one piece because I know you're coming. <laughs> but we're going to try, right? UK Disney Chief Amanda said, Richie, you're so 
so kind and helpful. Madonna, that was so delicious. You're such an amazing cook. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Okay, so we're going to cut in. Now, usually, you know, the first piece might not be as pretty. We'll, we'll see how it goes. That's crispy. Yeah. Look at that, guys. Turn it. Yeah. And if you could get a picture of this, Richard, because it came out beautiful from the side. That was my shoe. <laughs> Okay, I'm getting on a flight. I'll be down. All right. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Okay, Richie. It's the moment you've been waiting for. Everyone says I like it. Yeah, it's so good. I mean, you're not going to taste cinnamon. I know you think you're going to taste cinnamon. Mm. Oh, my gosh. It tastes so good. Mmm. Mm, I love it. It's really good. Mm. That's good. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. This is dinner. Yeah. Guys, so we did it. We made. A beautiful Greek pastitio, and it was authentic, and it came out absolutely perfect, I think. Um, I think Richie liked it. I don't think he loved it. And, you know, if you have a picky eater, I don't think Nick would like this. But if you're an adventurous eater or you like Middle Eastern or African food like I do, you'd love this. It's really so good. Um, Mom, if you're still watching, this is a winner. <laughs> You've got to try this. Yes. Purple girl says, hello, Donna Jaworski. Well, hello, Cherie. So Welcome in. to see you again on this trip. Me too. It was so much fun seeing you and James. I wish I had gotten to see all of you a little bit more. My foot just is not cooperating. And I did the best I could. So I, I hope I saw as many of you as I possibly could. I love you all so much. And I appreciate you at the bottom of my heart. Honestly, it was Mary bad Ellen. timing. Peace out, Mary Ellen. Hi, Mary Ellen. It's so good to see you. Welcome in. So, guys, this is it. <laughs> we did it. In just a little over an hour, my foot's going to be happy. <laughs> well said. Looks so good. Great job, Donna. Well, thank you so much. It's so delicious. You guys have to try this recipe. It's very time-consuming and labor-intensive, but honestly, you know, a cold winter day when you're stuck inside, and want to cook something yummy and hearty and comforting this is the dish to do and it freezes like a dream I mean we're gonna freeze this for sure and any of my friends who are in town who want leftovers I'm gonna have a second one coming out of the oven in about an hour so, so hit me up I will hook you guys up um, so just text me DM me whatever you want Jackley family if you're interested let me know I can definitely pack some of this up for you. Um, does our dream, if you're listening and watching Jeff and Ange, happy to pack some of this up for you guys. And any of my other friends who live nearby, just let me know, and you can have some of this delicious pastizio. Bando Rim said, looks delicious. Have you ever made this moussaka? Oh, Bando Rim, yes, I have. I love moussaka. Do you like eggplant? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that would be a winner with Richie, but I love moussaka. Maybe we'll make that one time. That would be yummy. And when Jay said, yum, my favorite Greek meal. Yeah, mine too. It's so good. Serve this with like a side Greek salad and a little bit of like a crusty nice bread or pita bread. Oh my gosh, perfect meal. Is good? And Carol Hank said, mom is ordering you to rest your foot. Yes, I am, Mom. I am. I'm going to call for my MRI on Monday 
And hopefully it's not a ruptured tendon, but we're thinking it is because the shots haven't been working. And it, whether I'm standing or sitting, I'm in pain. So it doesn't really matter. It's, it's just painful. So I'm just dealing with it. And I'll be fine, guys. It, it's just we'll figure it out. I'll let you guys know and keep you posted and all that. But I'm, I'm sure I'll be fine. But, yeah, we've got this beautiful test CPO. And we talked about our good kids in the world. We talked about next fundraiser tomorrow at noon. Magical News Live. Check it out, guys. We'll be there with Nick. Uh, so look for us. And um, support Nick and his VBS fundraiser. And then on December 7th, don't forget about Corey. And Corey Meets World with his huge Give Kids the World Christmas extravaganza. A magical night of hope with Yeehaw Bob and Josh on saxophone and Corey singing. It's going to be amazing. And, of course, don't forget our huge, huge second annual Christmas Cookie Baking Marathon fundraiser for Give Kids the World on Sunday, November 28th, our normal day and time, no, normal day, different time, special time, 2 p.m., mark it down, and we are going to start early because we are going to go well into the night. I told Richie to try to take the day, next day off because we might be going till midnight. I am going until we get two wishes fulfilled, and I don't care if I go all night. I'm going, and I'm going to do it. We're going to do it. I've got friends coming to help me, and we're going to make it happen. So thank you all so much for joining me today. I know it was a quick one, um, but we drew lots of long ones. So this one's a nice little quick one for all of you guys. And uh, I, I just wanted to uh, put it out there, get my fundraiser out there, make some fun food for you guys, and um, not, you know, overdo it with my foot. I'm saving it up for the big one, the big one in, in two weeks from tomorrow. <laughs> but it was so nice sharing all of this with you guys. Do you want to come say goodbye, Richie? Goodbye, Richie. No, no, no. <laughs> you don't get off that easy. And I would also like to say a special thank you to my beautiful Samantha for uh, lending me her laptop to try to fix this problem that we've been having. Um, I'm probably going to have to either get my computer repaired or something. I don't know. But we're, we'll fix it definitely before the big fundraiser. So we'll work on it. But um, until then, we will see you on next stream tomorrow. Around noon, we'll probably be joining about one or so because we have church in the morning. And then um, I will see you guys on this channel two weeks from tomorrow, 2 p.m., for our huge Christmas cookie baking marathon. So don't miss it. It's going to be chock full of surprises and fun and lots of cookies. So until then, we will say goodbye and be kind to each other, stay safe, and enjoy your weekend. Good night, everybody. Thank mm -hmm. you.